связи с тем, что у нас достаточно много иностранных докладчиков, они будут доклад по этим английским языкам. So, guys, hello. My name is Eugen. I'm a lead developer in uh, Aura Inc. on a project called uh, Aura Commerce. Uh, today, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, our platform called Aura Platform and about developing of business application uh, based on this platform. So, let's start from something. And something is applied. Probably you heard, heard this expression, as easy as why. This means a really, really easy. And actually, the first question I'd like to ask, who actually tried to make a pie yourself? Oh, nice. Just to try. Just try. Yeah. Not finish, just try. <laughs> <laughs> Everything started from try. It's completely fine. So it's actually good. But if you actually finish uh, trying to uh, make a pie, you know that uh, first time it's not a really easy thing. You have to find the menu, cold recipe, you have to find uh, products like milk uh, and butter or something else. You have to do some action, etc. etc. And the first time it's not easy. And the second time it's it, the second time it's easy, the third time it's really easy, and then you forget that uh, you experience some problems or some issues with this thing. And the same thing with our platform. Uh, first time when you uh, will uh, look at it, it will uh, make you look a bit uh, weird because there are some uh, components uh, that are not uh, presented in Symfony and they used a bit different way. There are some conflicts that also are compiled with some magic tools or some magic approaches uh, with that. But it's fine uh, when you will see a cases where they used and we will see uh, things where they used, you will completely understand what it is. Uh, this picture what that was used last year in Madrid conferences, uh, it's easy as fine. And I think it might be even easier. As easy as drawing all. The first iteration, you draw some basic things, and then you draw some everything else. But, well, joke is joke. Let's start our business. Uh, our platform is a platform to develop a business application uh, tools, a business, application, uh, business applications itself. Everything starts from core, and core, as you see here, is a symphony. We're using symphony framework, uh, LTS edition 2.7 right now, and based on this framework, we built uh, lots of features. Uh, these are uh, might be business, uh, like basic features like grids, like uh, reports, like statistics, etc., etc., and it also are features that are related uh, specifically to business applications. It's uh, user roles, it's a specific ACL and specific security engine used. It's uh, special workflows that can be customized by the configuration and from UI. And everything, all everything is called uh, our platform. It used uh, to encapsulate all this uh, stuff in one framework. So basically it's a framework based on framework. And uh, provide a really easy tool, a really easy way to do it and start developing it. As any big Symfony or not Symfony framework, it uses lots of components. Of course, it's a Symfony full stack. Uh, I believe uh, even not full stack, maybe even more than full stack. Uh, we are using Doctrine as ORM, or we are supporting MySQL, and both three we are using DMS, Serializer, you can have you, Postgres, Cyrus, Gmail, Batch, Lib. Well, you know, we need more. And that's it. Uh, the components that uh, we're using, the components that help us to uh, deliver a code that is easy to explain, easy to understand, and because we're trying to use uh, components that have implementation, it's easier to develop this code, it's easier to understand how it works. Uh, maybe from, uh, we're trying to use interfaces from this external bundle, sometimes we need to cover this uh, with our own but the basic, uh, the main and basic idea, idea are still the same. So if you know, for example, how one Postgres bundle, you will not uh, experience any problems with uh, REST API in our platform. And when you start developing, you can uh, provide a business application out of the box. What does it mean? It means that uh, if you start developing the application, the application uh, can be deployed in any moment of time. So out of the box, it provides install. It provides uh, you an API if you want to use it. It provides you a security tool, so you don't need to implement all this uh, crazy stuff. 
uh, it provides you a report engine, provides you workflow engine, provides you import export that can be used for integrations, and uh, some uh, other tools that can be used in any business application, no matter what application it is. Let's start from something easy. Let's start from installation. Uh, we are using Composer as a basic tool to install an application. So just uh, set up simple Composer script, name, description, repositories. Uh, we have our own packages. This is packages used to install extensions. Uh, and I'll explain what this extension is. Uh, you see platform is a framework and you can combine any applications together. Uh, for example, uh, we have application called Aura CRM. And basically, CRM is an extension to a platform. So you can install platform application, then you can add to it a CRM extension. Then you can add, add to it, for example, ERP extension. Then you can do it, for example, commerce extension, etc., etc. So you can com uh, combine these extensions and any combination you need. And uh, the packages is uh, actually source where these all extensions can be uh, available and uh, you can find the manual, specify them and require your installation or you can do it later uh, from UI. So we have package manager, you can go there and it has uh, a connection with our packages. You can only specify the name of the package, click install and it will be, will be automatically downloaded and uh, included into application. The only thing you might need uh, is uh, check uh, if the cache is valid, but actually it depends on the application that you are going to install. Next important thing is the business features. It's the features that actually allows businesses application to make money. Uh, this is marketing tools, for example. Uh, we can uh, send emails, we can provide the ability to uh, store these emails, we can uh, check and uh, make emails based on customer segments or contact segments. Of course, for example, in CRM, we can do it for custom CRM entities like leads, like opportunities, like sales process. Uh, same thing relates to integration. For example, in CRM, we have integration with Magento, and you can do these emails based on Magento customers or Magento segments. Uh, another business tool is uh, tools that created uh, for some specific client, and that is one of the great advantages of our platform. It provides you a way to do it uh, e quite easy and quite fast. So, for example, uh, we have a real uh, example with our, one of our partners from USA. Uh, he needed to do a quite complex thing, and uh, when our manager uh, got an UI instruction, he was able to do the required thing from UI for a couple of hours. And usually, the developers, uh, the developer. Uh, need about a uh, week or two weeks to implement from the code. So lots of tools are available from UI and, you, and uh, in some cases you don't even have to be a developer to implement some features. Next important thing, next advantage is a user-friendly UI. Uh, we have quite a lot of components that implemented out of the box. We have menus, we have tabs, we have uh, in search, uh, some kind of uh, quick search by uh, types by uh, menu. Uh, in this specific case, you can see that menu is on the left, so the side of section of the menu, and you can customize it and move it to the uh, top. Uh, the icons on the top are tabs. You can switch on and on the main area. You can see a basic grid. Uh, the grid itself contains lots of components that can be uh, used either in grid or outside of grid. For example, filters are separate from grid. These are different bundles in uh, our platform. And uh, each filter uh, provides a way to filter grid. You can, of course, sort it, export, or import it, uh, basic origination, or page refresh, reset. I believe it's quite clear what it is. It uh, allows you to manipulate that data in the way you need. Uh, on the UI side for our platform is a one-page application. It uses Backbone plus Chaplin as a framework MVC engine. Uh, and if you're familiar with the technologies, you will not face any uh, problems with that. And of course, uh, underscore, um, jQuery, and quite common libraries. Actually, about that, yeah. 
and the grids in Aura platform are defined in declarative style. So you don't need to manually write uh, requests, you don't need to manually uh, manipulate some kind of complex queries. Uh, the only thing you need is to decline uh, first source config. In this specific case, uh, we are doing simple query filter. So the section from select and from is basically converted to uh, quite uh, simple in this specific case, quite simple uh, query builder and query. And then uh, we use the query style to define which uh, data from this uh, select we want to see on your item. In this specific case, you can see it's a label, it's a sorter for this label, and a drawing for this label is type string. There are lots of types, there are lots of columns, you can use anything of this. Extending is one of the interesting things we implemented in platform. Uh, the main idea of any business is extendability. For example, uh, depending on what business you are aligned with, you can uh, even in CRM you might want add or additional information about customer or additional address for customer or some kind of additional source or some kind of additional opportunity, etc. And all these things uh, must be uh, dynamically added to one of the entities. Let's assume that we have entity contacts and we want to add a relation, for example, to a lead where this contact is came from. And by default, for example, it's not available out of the box. So what can we do? We can, from UI, uh, go to uh, entity management page. We can uh, add the relation to the Malenki. In our specific case, it's lead. And now we can uh, modify this entity on UI. How does it work on the backend? On the backend, we have some kind of uh, intermediate layer used to manipulate these fields. So uh, our entity that uh, should be extended, in fact, uh, contains an intermediate entity uh, that is uh, extended from. And this intermediate entity uh, automatically, in, uh, uh, automatically receives all data about uh, all data it needs to add. For example, if we need relation to our entity, uh, our platform automatically generate code in this uh, intermediate entity and automatically update the print of the data. So the trainer will think that it's regular field and nothing uh, wrong with it and with, uh, works out of the box uh, the same way if it is a regular field. And security, another interesting thing. Uh, we thought a lot about the security cases in business applications and uh, finally we decided to use following models. Uh, we have uh, five levels of uh, security permissions. These are system, organization, division, business unit and user. Let me explain using an example. Let's assume that you're working in a really big company and there are some people who want to have an access to anything and everywhere, for example, some administrators. Is a system level. Uh, for example, we need uh, the same system administrators but on the organization level. So, for example, we have the United States branch and we have the Ukraine branch of some company. And this organization level. Uh, on each branch, there might be different divisions. Divisions are like uh, branches of uh, these uh, regional divisions. Mm, there might be, for example, a branch uh, that uh, relates to technical support, might be, for example, a branch that relates to marketing, etc. And each branch, branch might contain a business unit that uh, relates to specific uh, roles or to specific things that uh, they have to do. For example, it might be two or three people who work uh, specifically on emails or several people who work on specific support, for example, of this one office, this a business unit. And the user is a uh, endpoint user, it's a person for actual access uh, system, and uh, this is a uh, lowest level of access. So how does it work? Uh, when we specify permission for some user, and user, uh, and, uh, user is a lowest uh, level, each entity uh, might have an owner. Owner is defines who owns this entity and who have uh, rights to manipulate and entity owner might specify either as a user or a business name. So when we specify a permission, we specify the level it used for. And depends on the level and owner, the security will decide whether access should be granted or restricted. Uh, for example, we want 
for some maintenance, for example, contacts to be available for all users in one business unit. Uh, and it means that we have to specify security on business unit level, and after that, uh, all users that are included in this business unit will be able to allow and you know, allow and access, or for example, to view, edit, delete, and whatever, to all entities that were created by all other users of the business unit. And so the same thing on the highest level of the regional relation and the system. Yeah. We are trying on it, we are working on extending and we are trying to make our system as extendable and as flexible as we can. Uh, sometimes it might make some time, but we have already faced a lot of uh, cases where extendability is one of the uh, main requirements for the system. So where uh, we need to work with the clients that might have quite different and sometimes even uh, requirements that are contrary each to other and we don't know which it is, so we must provide the ability to implement both uh, ways, even, even, the, even, even if uh, the first, for example, implementation uh, uh, will block the second, and vice versa. And uh, this, they might uh, An example of that might be if we need to show the same information, for example, on the same page, but for different users, they, they uh, might be completely different. So we have to somehow specify that, and we can do it either on the UI level or on the code level. The code level is clear if something else something. And on the uh, UI level, basically, it's done with either the same menu item, so <coughs> it will be transparent to user, for example, he access contacts. And at the same time, he might access either contacts for the first type or contacts for the second type. Uh, next important and interesting component we introduced and uh, developed quite some time ago is uh, layouts. Uh, layouts is uh, another way to render out. So by default, Symfony uses templates. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And these uh, templates, uh, Symfony template, the three templates to be more, more precise, are working in quite simple uh, way. You just uh, pass in a template name, you pass in some variables there, and maybe some kind of interesting hap uh, things happen there, it includes, extends, maybe uh, some um, uh, tweet extensions, filters functions of the portrait, and that's it, uh, you have a template. The problem of this approach is extendability and flexibility. It's not clear how to add additional functionality from another bundle if the source bundle doesn't know about this functionality. Our first approach was to implement some things uh, called placeholders, and these things is actually quite similar to event uh, dispatcher to things symphony. So placeholder is a thing like triggering an event, and anything, any bundle, any template can uh, subscribe to it and tell that please insert this uh, part of code depending on some additions we specify in the configuration. But that wasn't enough. Unfortunately, and we needed to even more something even more flexible. The layouts is a basic structure that built on uh, built of several blocks, and every bundle in every application in, uh, that include, uh, included in our platform might uh, say which block you want to see in which place with which parameters. So it's really highly customizable. Uh, actually, layouts are heavily inspired by form component. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, and uh, these layouts actually uh, will be the quite interesting way to customize a template. For example, if you need to create an extension, and this extension uh, have to either customize whole page or customize part of the page, for example, and just add a new block for whole page of the same of the sub type. Etc. Et Global search, quite common thing for all business application. Uh, each entity defines configuration that you use to search. It defines what field used, what type of field used, how are they mapped or not mapped to the uh, search index. Uh, there are two ways of indexation and two ways of uh, how the data from entity is passed to the storage. It's either real-time indexation where the data is 
uh, passed to the index right after the data is changed and the queue indexation that allows to put in queue this process. Uh, the main idea of uh, queuing this process is to uh, improve performance and decrease uh, time of performing this operation. Advanced Search is a search API in fact, so you might not only select uh, John Doe from everywhere or from some entity. You can uh, create really complex queries. Uh, we have special language for search. It's quite uh, similar to SQL or DQL. And you can uh, define the, uh, the queries that uh, have to be executed on the search index. The main uh, advantage in comparison with Doctrine is that search index works much, much faster. The enterprise uh, version, we support Elasticsearch as a search engine and in the community version, uh, the index stored in database and uh, full text index is used to perform this search. <coughs> Reports is one of the crucial, one of the most important parts of the any business application because uh, the reports allow business owner to specify uh, where he is, how he is doing, and how is the process, and actually how much money you get. Reports uh, representation based on the data grids. Reports are uh, actually a grid or tables, where you go it. And uh, these tables allows to render or show any <coughs> information from the database you need. Uh, we have custom UI builder for that, so you don't need to be a developer to specify this query, you may to do it from user interface, so you just go to some page, uh, tells, I want, for example, select first name, last name, and uh, average uh, revenue from some uh, business opportunity, and that's it. And you will get this information either by quarters or by uh, year, or maybe even uh, you can specify it for some kind of uh, email, so for example, you want to see all uh, revenues or summary, uh, some of the revenues by some customer or some client in your business. Total grouping sorting applied the same on the uh, reports as well as to the grids. And we also have chart representation to provide easier way to uh, see what was changed, what was changed. For example, a really good case when you want to see how much money did you get by quarters or by months, so you can see a plain good, uh, good, good, good uh, play line, and you will check, you can check uh, your revenue, for example, by month. Workforce is one of the interesting and uh, flexible components that allow to customize uh, user interface and customize ability of the application itself. Workflows actually is an edit manipulations. You, for example, need to perform some kind of manipulation with entity and you want to do it from UI and you want to do it easy and fast. Then workflows is your best choice. Workflows basically is a state machine, so you have some kind of states or nodes and there are transitions between these nodes. This, uh, this uh, provides ability to specify uh, different transition between different nodes depends on different conditions. Uh, we got also have UI management tools. It's not as powerful as backend, but you can also create a simple process. Like for example, for ticketing system, you want to have an open progress closer, then reopen, etc., etc. So this uh, quite uh, simple workflow can depend from UI. If you want, for example, workflow that will work based on some conditions, like for example, we can start from API or database, etc. You have to go on the backend specify it there. Conditions are actual some conditions that can be used to either restrict or allow some part of the actions or some part of uh, transitions. And the actions are uh, special manipulation can be performed either on entity or on some data there from anywhere, from API, from reports. Anyway. Yeah, and sometimes the process integration might be quite quick. In this case, you just have to remember that the documentation uh, might uh, clear, might, uh, might, for, uh, might help you uh, with uh, uh, to find an answer on your question. And of course, uh, you can always check the code, how it works, and check uh, what was doing wrong, what's going wrong in your application if it's happened. 
There are lots of ways to use our platform and application based on it. Uh, the first thing uh, comes to mind is any internet application. These are applications that are not uh, available on the World Wide Web as uh, glo on the global internet, but it can be available only for some specific internets. It might be ticketing systems, it might be call center uh, applications, it might be uh, closed uh, CRMs, it might be uh, some kind of closed uh, e-commerce solution, ERP, of course, uh, anything you can, and anything that can be used uh, for needs of some specific company. And also, it might be applications that also um, provides an access to the all people on the internet. In this case, uh, you just have to remember that uh, front end part of the application must be optimized for high quality. There are several applications uh, built on our platform. These are most popular uh, on uh, right now. Uh, there are two applications built by our company. It's our CRM and our commerce. Our CRM is now a 1.9 community version. Our commerce uh, has alpha leads, I believe, several weeks ago. And also, it's Hypineo BIM, already mentioned it today. Uh, product information management tool that provides easy way to manipulate product attributes, product information, uh, catalog information, etc. And Diamond Desk is a ticketing system that provides easy way to support uh, some uh, some business for some products. Uh, that's all. If you have some questions, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask also in Russia. У меня есть вопрос, ты, ты рассказывал голландскую, да? Ты рассказывал по поводу возможности э, добавлять э, динамический код э, mm -hmm. в эти различные э, поля. Okay. И первый вопрос, э, как э, к этим полям можно добавлять флеш? Как к этим полям можно добавлять флеш? Или как это поле можно добавлять флеш? Ну, как это поле может быть флеш? С точки зрения данных, ты хочешь добавлять статическое поле, добавляешь флеш, ты хочешь. То есть ты просто вмешиваешься в данные доктрины, ну, то есть сама вмешиваешься в данные доктрины, я для тебя. Добавляет так флеш, допустим, это типа one to one to one, создает такую... Ну, простой пример. У нас есть звонки, у нас есть пользователи, у нас есть заказы к этому звонку. То есть вот, собственно, создать... По умолчанию, не ошибаюсь, звонок уже имеет связь с пользователем, то есть это делать не нужно. А вот, допустим, связь с ордером нету. То есть ты заходишь в звонок и говоришь, хочу добавить связь с ордером. Там проходишь через... Хочу захожу куда? Заходишь в IT менеджмент. То есть есть такая вещь, как IT менеджмент, там есть все кэнтики. То есть к любой IT можно добавить поле. Это как кликабельный интерфейс? Да, там есть небольшой визор, который позволяет это делать. То заходишь, говоришь, хочу, допустим, на сущность кола добавить там связь с ордером. Указываешь там, какой там табличка при сущность ордера, что ты хочешь добавить, может, допустим, будет ордер, там, из CRM ордера, там, из коммерса, куда еще ордер. Нажимаешь Next, обновляешь, нажимаешь кнопочку Update Schema, он обновляет схему базы данных, и все, я появляюсь на ордер. Еще вопрос сюда же, к этим же полям. Да. Enterprise, думаю, ну, что имеет возможность подключенной желасти к нему. То есть да. эти поля автоматически зажигаются у вас? А, там ты указал, можешь указать, что должно быть, это все, чего нет. И сразу за что будет ухватно. Да. Спасибо. Да, спасибо. По поводу власти все еще интересно. Да. Вот вообще, пару вопросов. Во-первых, вот, она применяется в версии полной, да? В интерпрессе. В комьюнити только через базу данных, через... А насколько это то разворачивается все? Вы знаете очень легко. То есть есть небольшой канал, можно написать две точки в конфиг. Можно написать третью точку, но звонить, если это сильно хочется. После этого делается переборка кэшей и делается полный ринкс по необходимости. Все. Спасибо. Еще такой вопрос. Вот у вас есть еще. В чем необходимость у вас возникла? Скорость. Скорость. То есть, и когда, допустим, в базе уже там не знаю, 10 тысяч сущностей, это мелочь. То 100 тысяч сущностей, это в принципе еще можно пойти. Вот, когда там, там начинают играть миллионы, то а, поиск в базе через полнотестовый поиск занимает очень много времени. А, в смысле, используя правда лайк? А, в том числе лайк, в том числе матч against и так далее. Спросите для нас греха. Во-первых, достаточно разумный язык запроса и, соответственно, скорость. 
тот перформанс, который на Elastic Search, он перекрывает все там возможные, возможные функции. Да. То есть, допустим, когда делали тесты, получалось на статистических тестах от 50 до 100 раз больше. 50, 50, 40 объемов, да, 50, 40 раз выше. Ну, то есть, если это объемов, это делалось на объемах, там, порядка, если просто 10 тысяч тысяч. Вопрос еще по поводу динамического обновления. А? Где эта информация хранится, если пользователь добавляет эту конфессию? Данные о самой сущности хранятся в сущности, то есть метаданные наши собственные называются entity config. А потом на основании этого entity config генерится кэш, генерится сама программа сущность. То есть, соответственно, для того, чтобы разработчики могли поддерживать клиентский проект, клиент у себя там на программе оказывал себе какие-то связи сущностей, а программист должен у себя локальное окружение воспроизвести полностью копию продакшн сервера. То есть ему нужно так, вот, это все отпускать, как это миссионирует. Не обязательно. Да, у нас есть миграции, миграция есть по версии, миграция может быть обычные поля на кейсы на поля. Кто не решает, в принципе, сделать специальную миграцию, которая на окружении клиента разъемет, допустим, там текст на поле. Я не увидел возможность с ним пока. Здесь после интернет-сферанских шутки его нету. Вообще, как бы на многих рейтингах справа слева, сейчас в принципе покажу. На многих сущностях есть возможность сделать импорт-экспорт. Он разворачивается буквально за пару часов для обычной сущности. Подключался. Уже пробовал. По поводу управления доступом. Очень интересно смотреть. С точки зрения, есть у меня те же самые опять пользователи Ардра и Колы, и я хочу сказать, что возьмем, возьмем конечного пользователя, да, что mm -hmm. а, пользователь там такой-то не имеет права смотреть сами Ардра, но может смотреть Колы этих пользователей, но вот он посреди может. То есть вот каким образом указывается вот это, это возможность Я понял. То есть ты говоришь, что это такое сущность, там какие-то практически. Это сливается тоже? Да, это сливает. Если я заинтересован в сливании, то я тоже посмотрю. В три. Сейчас поедем. Собственно, это публично доступно для демоистов, если вы желающие можете идти по классу. Так, вопрос был по импорту, да? Да. Надо посмотреть какие замечательные кнопочки, экспорт, да, импорт. Ближе, да. Для импорта есть несколько стратегий, есть темплейт дефолтный. А есть какой-то API для этой штуки, для того, чтобы интегрировать с существующим приложением? Uh, смотри, в принципе, и API, и интерфейса построены одной и той же, ну, тот же движке импортизации. То есть это просто вопрос в том, откуда ты читаешь данные. Ты читаешь из файла, ты читаешь из API. В принципе, все отличие. Можно сделать разные стратегии при желании, допустим, для контакта под add или add and replace. Add все это будет быстрее, потому что там какой-то будет заезд. Можно или нет? Да. Есть связи, можно как-то связь А, это демо-инстант. Здесь, если не ошибаюсь, не все возможности разрешены. Там есть. Есть, да? Давайте попробуем. Чтобы взять. Mm 
какой-нибудь custom user, many to one relation, например. Выбирается сущность. То есть куда? Да. да. Поле. Ну, дальше если указывается имя. Позиция, exclude, не exclude. Параметры это всякие дополнительные выводы. делаем апдейт скимы. Физически, физически это сейчас происходит Alter Table. А, а можно вопрос? Да. А если там, не знаю, там миллион ну, товаров да. каких-то, что будет? Вот здесь нужно просто иметь в виду, что это речь идет Alter Table. То есть если вы, допустим, позволяете своим, допустим, пользователям, которые пользуются тем, такие вещи делать, имейте в виду. Ну а то, то есть можно как-то... Не отсюда сделать. Не отсюда, да, можно. Можно тоже самое сделать через миграцию, например. То есть можно, допустим, запретить доступ там, менеджера, допустим, в менеджмент Epitis. Допустим, у них там по запросу, допустим, сделать какую-то операцию, которая будет накатывать эти экстренные поля. Все же через я можно сделать через и код. Смотрим. Да, там это остается на уровне этого поля. На уровне поля. То есть из поля говоришь, хочу или хочу или хочу или хочу. Да, да. Там было много фильмов, там можно было сказать, что хочу или на форме, на вью, на вью и так далее. Сейчас. Ты уже не скинешь. Окей. Regarding, for example, How uh, hard is to integrate, for example, uh, grids and filters into any existing Symfony applications? Uh, is it the coupled from our platform? Is there, is there a bundle that uh, people can use right away? Does some people use it just for the for example, yeah. just for this? Because I mentioned before, like I think two years ago or so, I was doing a research about existing import export functionality for Symfony 2. Uh, in particular for serious project, we want, uh -huh. wanted to reuse something, and I came across Oro. Uh, and at that time, back at that time, it was not decoupled nor documented, and there was not even registered packages. So we opened an issue, and it went yeah. kind of slow. Uh, unfortunately, I, I got discouraged, and uh, I didn't follow the the, the yeah. development of Oro platform uh, recently. But uh, what is the situation in general now? Is this Are these components decoupled and are they used widely? Uh, in the we are working on it. We have a uh, decoupling of components and platform in our backlog, so we are going to uh, provide a way to uh, use very, very simple uh, uh, implementation, very, very simple version of platform. And uh, depends on your requirements, you can add there, for example, workflow, simple construct, uh, sequence, and uh, So. <laughs> Uh, and unfortunately, right now there is no way to easy uh, split grids from the application. You can do it manually. You can do you can get three bundles: grid bundle, filter bundle, and UI bundle. And I believe that's it. Uh, information contained in these bundles. Unfortunately, uh, uh, outside of platform, you can go and copy only one bundle. You have to do some customization yourself. Import expert is the engine that is, uh, depends on the configuration, but it's depending on the implementation level. Interfaces are quite common, you can use the same. Make sure they use all the background they're using. I can have a bunch of bundles, so you can get it, get our interfaces, and uh, implement the import expert based on it. So currently it's a bit coupled, but yeah. uh, do you plan to, like, yes, make it uh, we have uh, planning. We have plans and we have tasks in our backlog to separate and split 
uh, on smaller models, smaller open and smaller models. Because it, this is really awesome features, I would really like to see it out there and to use it. Uh, because I think it's a very common scenario where you, you have such such uh, such uh, components on the UI, and it, I, I, I guess many many projects will uh, look forward to integrate it uh, because it's really powerful. Yeah, we know about these requirements. We have them in the And Did you try to encourage uh, open source community to like uh, help you with that? Because I, I guess you're very busy with. Uh, uh, you know, actually, we so wait with our here, but our lazy, lazy. Yeah. That's the first uh, point. And the second point that it's uh, sometimes it took some time. Of course. Yeah. And not uh, not like every developer can allow that. Not every developer can allow to spend, for example, two days or three days to do it just for fun. А возможно, из отменки удаления всех коллег, которые так созданы, образом так вот, в этом случае поддерживать экосистемность, например, ну, скорее всего, может же ну, приложение скалайбл, да, то есть можно его как на несколько сегментов. Я понял уже вопрос. Это первый вопрос, а второй, а второй вопрос, соответственно, если удалить несколько полей, то скорее всего, ну, вот представить, я пока не беру вопрос, как они создаются, эти тесты, а существуют ли там тесты написанные. Удалить какое-то поле, перестанут, скорее всего, те же функциональные, да, там, перестанут это поле, как-то устанавливать, каким образом поддерживать здесь это, ну. А, смотрите, при удалении полей, они, на самом деле, из базы удаляются, они, они скрываются, на самом деле, просто с UI, и все. То есть, текущий момент, это наш подход к таким экстренным полям. А, второй вопрос по поводу тестирования. Вот здесь просто зависит от конкретного приложения. Допустим, если ваше приложение сильно зависит от этих полей, заводите соответствующие там тесты, там селение более функциональные и проверяете и все то, что должно работать. Скажите, пожалуйста, коммерс сервис платный или бесплатный? Коммерс или Enterprise? Enterprise. Enterprise платный, да. А на сколько стоит? Могу вас только послать на сайт. Да, будет обновление, то даже специальные люди на это. А техническая поддержка присутствует? Техподдержка для партнеров и для интерпрайса версии. То есть, в принципе, у нас например, даже есть специальные люди, которые тестируют там интеграцию в самой-самой древней версии до текущей. Коллега только что сказал про хорошее слово Scalable. Как насчет масштабируемости? Мы надеемся на облака. Uh, смотри, у нас, в принципе, даже есть SAS решение на самом-то деле. Uh, но здесь надо просто только понимать о масштабируемости. То есть, допустим, сделать несколько инстанций с одной базой без проблем. А вот uh, база, к сожалению, у нас обычная, uh, которая реляционный акт БМС, то есть в принципе можно использовать Postgres, можно использовать их а, облачную реплекацию, как вариант. Но а, мы сами это явно не предоставляем. Женя, если мы говорим о том же использовании в интерфейсе Elasticsearch, который, в общем, только весь интерфейс, то есть в принципе у Юра его, Шарп его, и нет проблем со всеми. Это вопрос только Elastic, но не всего остального. То есть Elastic, да. Ну, а все равно это конфигурация, основные данные будут загружаться с Elastic. Смотри, у нас сейчас получается эластика использовать для глобального сеча, то есть большинство данных все еще там интеграции из базы. А, там да, да. То есть если вы просто перенесете тогда и работу интерфейса на эластика, да, да. вопрос колобилить вообще не Это у нас в принципе тоже где-то есть бэклоги, такая задача о том, что это нужно будет сделать. Просто когда это будет сделано, я не могу ответить. Понятно. Еще вопросы есть, ребята? Спасибо, Женя.